Welcome, future engineers. My name is Janice Brown, and with me today is my co-presenter. My name is Malcolm Manuel. I am one of the academic advisors here. Many of you have asked, what tools can I use to help me determine what classes I still have to complete for my degree requirements? So today we hope to answer that question and many more. One of the key tools and the official tools that you have is called your degree audit, and it's accessible to you via your R web. At the very top of this tool, once you log in with your credentials, you'll see your full name and your class level. Right below, you'll find two progress bars. You'll find the units progress bars and the requirement progress bars. The unit progress bars is not one that you should pay close attention to because it's just telling you how many units you've completed. Whereas the requirements is telling you how close am I to the finish line to meeting all of my degree requirements. So the top one is more important. The next, uh, ask, the next section you'll see is an itemized list of the college graduation requirements. So these are more generic things that you need to do in a broader sense as far as the college is concerned and not so much regulated to your major. Here you'll find your breadth requirements. What are breadth requirements? They're requirements that you are expected to complete, but they are outside of your major. So you'll find classes here such as English, history, and you may be wondering, how do I determine what class do I need to take for this each respective category? It's simple. You click here on this link. You'll be directed to this page. You will click on this link, which will direct you to a comprehensive list of the courses that you can complete for each respective category. You also have access to look at those classes on the schedule of classes. The next category is interlinked with the previous one. It's called the Depth for Bourne's College of Engineering. This section consists of two classes that you're required to take. And they're different from these up here because they're upper division. Upper division courses are courses numbered 100 or above but you can still find which classes will satisfy these requirements by clicking on the link. The next section you'll see are your lower division requirements for your particular major. These are courses that are typically required for your first and second years at the institution. The upper division requirements vary depending on your major. So for each major, they will look different. These are courses, again, that are numbered 100 or above and are specific to your major requirements. After that, you'll want to pay really close attention to your upper division GPA, as you are required to earn a minimum of 2.0 upper division GPA. If you're wondering what classes are calculated and how is my upper division GPA calculated, those classes will be listed here, right below. Keep in mind that not all of your upper division classes from the previous section will be factored into your upper division GPA. For example, if you're a computer science major, your STAT 155 class will not be factored into your upper division GPA. The math and science section is for information purposes only. Nothing in this category will prevent you from graduating. Another section that many of you will see right below here will be the additional units completed. The additional units completed simply means that, that, that those are classes that are additional that are not satisfying any of your major requirements previously discussed. Some of you may also come across the insufficient category. This category consists of classes as a result of uh, grade delays, withdrawals, or deficient grades. 